5am and I'm here to make a video because why not? My son Mule kicked me in the back again and I'm awake. So if I look like ass, it's because I... It's because I feel like ass. Wow. So I showed you guys recently a, a demonstration of some of the cool things I've been doing recently with Home Assistant and getting it to load things on my Fire Stick. Uh, my Fire Stick can now load up video feeds of my front door automatically when the bell is rung, but it all happens locally, which means that it is instantaneous and it doesn't go to the cloud, which means it's entirely private. The second thing is I can also load any dashboard from Home Assistant, which means I can load up things like the whereabouts of my wife or all of my cameras around my property simultaneously. And I can do so with my face hole or by things happening such as the doorbell press. And people said, I want to see how you did that. So it, it, here's how I did that. <laughs> So first things first, you need to reserve a static IP address in your... Where are you going? This isn't complicated, I promise. You need to tell your router to give a specific IP address every single time to both your mini PC or your Raspberry Pi, whatever it is you've got Home Assistant installed on. And you also need to set a static IP address for your Fire Stick or whatever it is you plan to cast to. Because without that, if an IP address changes at any point, this whole thing falls apart. These days, your router probably has an app that you can use and you just visit the settings page that contains stuff like IP address information and tick a box. It's usually that simple. But if you don't know how to do this and you can't find your way around it, just ask ChatGPT. It's what I do, because it's 2025 and we don't think for ourselves anymore. ChatGPT is sick of your questions. It wants to die. Secondly, your Fire TV stick or Android-based TV, whatever it is you're using, isn't listening across your network for things happening normally by default. It's got its fingers in its ears. Oh. We need to take its fingers out of its ears by enabling ADB debugging. And this is really, really easy. On a Fire TV, all you do is go into settings, my Fire TV, about, and then scroll down to your device name and press the select button seven times. Yes, seven times. I don't... Who knows why? If you press it seven times, it will tell you you are now a developer, in the same way that Elon Musk is a genius. Is that, is that a good joke? ChatGPT wrote that. I don't think it was very funny. What are you doing? You're making us both look like idiots. I've, I've just had to make this sketch to make up for the fact that your joke's so sh**. Sort it out. Head back to My Fire TV, Developer Options, and turn ADB debugging on. This enables the Fire TV to listen in to stuff from across the network, and it also allows you to install stuff that wouldn't normally be installable on your Fire Stick, such as Fully Kiosk. Why not subscribe? You're here. I'm here. We're all friends. <laughs> it does me a huge favor if you do. Honestly, it helps keep the channel going. Give it a thumbs up too while you're at it. On with the show. There's this fantastic app that you can install on your phone called Apps to Fire, and it does what it says on the tin. It allows you to beam applications across from your phone to your Fire Stick so that your Fire Stick has them too. You can think of it like Scotty beaming Spock back to the Enterprise, only instead of saving the Federation, you're saving 10 seconds of Alexa buffering time. Last chance, dickhead. Make, listen, make better jokes or I'll start using Grok. I'm going to teach you how to get it on your Fire Stick because that's what I've used myself. If you don't know how to do this on your Google TV, just ask ChatGPT. ChatGPT. So if we go into Apps to Fire, it's going to load a list of all of your applications that are on your phone, and you can install any one of these to your Fire TV Stick. First of all, you need to set up your Fire TV Stick. So you go to the Setup tab, and then go to Search for Fire TVs. As long as you're connected to the same Wi-Fi network as the Fire TV Stick, it should find your Fire TV Stick here. Thank you. Ready Room Fire TV Stick is the one that I'm interested in. It's now connecting to the Fire TV Stick in my Ready Room. At which point you'll get a message saying allow USB debugging and you want to always allow from this computer and hit OK so it can access it. It connects successfully. From there, if you just go back to your local apps, you can install any one of these you like onto your Fire TV or Fire TV Stick. Now you can just get Fully Kiosk from the Play Store, but that will give you the one for this phone. You want the one for the Fire Stick. So instead we're going to visit fullykiosk.com. 
If you scroll down, because we want the one for the Fire Stick, don't click on Get It on Google Play, click on Get APK File. Just get the latest one if it is now the future, but you want regular edition, that's the one that should work, the latest regular edition APK. And there it is. You don't want to open it because that will install it on here. We want to install it on the Fire Stick. So we're going to go back to Apps to Fire. We're going to click this little button up here to upload the file to the Fire Stick. We're going to allow access. We're going to hit Got It. And then we just need to browse to a download folder. You should be able to literally just send the file across at that point. But if, like me, you have a phone that's being a complete and total dick, you won't be able to. Um, so I've had to install uh, CX File Explorer and I need to move the file. So I've got to move the fully kiosk file from my downloads folder. So we just tick it and go move and then go back. I need to move it to the main storage. And then I need to go to Android data. And you're looking for mobby.conny apps to fire TV files download paste. Stick it in there. Then I'll be able to access it. It was really annoying I had to do that. I used CX File Explorer to do that. And now in apps to fire, if you click this little up arrow at the top, I get a fully chaos browser. There it is. Install that on my Fire TV, please, you son of a bitch. I'm really annoyed. I've just wasted so much time. Several months later. Well, it took a very long time. It's been 84 years. <laughs> but it's done it. Installation successful. Finally, on to the next stage. Now we need to go into the settings for Fully Kiosk and tell it to do things like not fall asleep. Because if it falls asleep, it takes a while to load the feed and all this is pointless. So you use your Fire Stick remote as we did before to navigate through the menus. I think if you press the menu button on your Fire Stick remote, it brings up the side panel and then you can scroll down through those menus and tick the right boxes. Go through the settings and find anything that seems to suggest it might go to sleep and go and tick the box to tell it to stay awake. This includes things like keep screen on, prevent sleep, Launch on boot so that it starts every single time you restart your Fire Stick. Keep running in background, basically anything you can find that will stop Android being lazy. It's kind of like asking C-3PO to do something useful. You've got to be very specific or he just shuts down. Also in the settings, if you go into there, we need to go all the way down to Remote Administration Plus. Uh, you need to enable Remote Administration, otherwise you won't be able to control this thing using Home Assistant. So enable that and give it a password, whatever password you want to give it. You'll need to note down what that is, because you're going to want to put it into Home Assistant settings in a moment. And just tick this box, Remote Admin from Local Network. Uh, that is also required, so Home Assistant can control it. That's Fully Kiosk installed on your Fire TV stick. If you want to remove the watermark, that's a little bit fiddly, because you have to pay for it. It's very, very cheap. That's not the problem. The problem is that because this thing is not designed for a Fire TV, it's designed for your phone, it is very awesome awkward to navigate the menus to do so. You'll need a combination of ADB mouse, which I installed on my mobile phone. It allows you to kind of just like push around the screen and click on things. Um, and just your Fire TV remote to be able to navigate the menus to pay for this thing. I think I had to pay for a license on my mobile phone and then navigate the menus to transfer the license across. It's not that difficult once you know how to do it. It just took me a little while to figure out that I needed those applications to be able to navigate to do it. If you want rid of the watermark, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. If you already have a page in Home Assistant that you wanted fully kiosk to load, you could set it as its start URL. All you would need to do then is have Home Assistant tell the Fire Stick to load fully kiosk, and every time it loaded, it would load your video doorbell feed. It's that simple. What we're going to do though, is we're going to create some views specifically in Home Assistant that might be a little bit more exciting than that, so we can have those sent over to fully kiosk. Here is Paul from the past to, uh, to show you exactly how to do that. Pull from the past, you want to take them through it? Well, yes, I will, mate, but uh, not for your benefit. I'll do it for theirs. You're a prick. We uh, we still don't get on, mostly because yeah, he slept with my wife and I slept with his wife in the future. And uh, this joke is very old, but I haven't got time to make any new ones. <laughs> you are basically finished with this tutorial if all you wanted to do was load that one feed, the start page. All you have to do to get that working now is to go to settings 
in Home Assistant and go to Devices and Services and then Add Integration and Add Fully Kiosk. All you need is the IP address for your Fire Stick, which again you will get from your router's configuration pages and if you don't know how to do that, you know what to do. Ask. Ask chat GP team. Um, um, I happen to know mine is 192.168.187.203 and the password field you just want to put in whatever password you set up for Home Assistant in Fully Kiosk earlier on and hit submit. You should now have control over Fully Kiosk. You can see I've got my Ready Room Fire TV stick here and if I go in I can do things like start the screensaver. And here we can do things like create automations that will start our URLs on our Fully Kiosk browser. <laughs> You're so close to finished, it's ridiculous. So we just have to do one final thing before we can start importing my scripts. If you go to settings and then go to devices and services and then to helpers, we're going to create a helper and it's a text helper and you just call it Fire TV current URL and hit create. This thing is just going to store some information from the script that I've created for you. Here's the cool bit. I've done the rest for you. Literally, you, you barely have to do anything. There's a link in my description to the blueprint that I created. And if you don't know what a blueprint is, it basically allows other people to code up Home Assistant on your behalf. If you're watching me on your phone right now and your phone is connected to the same network as your Home Assistant instance is, you can literally just click the link in the description now and it will automatically ask you, do you want to import this into Home Assistant? and it will stick it in for you. That's what she said. So to just walk you through that a little bit more cleanly, if you click the first link, it will take you to add the blueprint to your own personal Home Assistant. All you gotta do is hit open link. I'll ask you if you want to import it, you just click preview and you'll be presented with this. This is my blueprint and all you've got to do is go through and select your entities. In my case, it's the Ready Room Fire TV. The Fully Kiosk device, I've only got one. If I had more than one Fire Stick with more than one instance of Fully Kiosk, they'd all appear here. The current URL helper is the thing we created earlier on, Fire TV current URL. And the target Lovelace URL, if you just open up a new instance of Home Assistant in a new tab, it's just whichever one of your dashboards you wanted to load. So I'm gonna take my shared as an example. That's my shared URL there. I just stick that in there. You do need, I think, in most cases, to replace that with your IP address for Home Assistant. In my case. 192.168.187.18 If you then save the script and we're going to call this one Shared Cam and then rename We're going to then advertise that to Amazon Alexa by hitting those three dots Going to settings Scrolling down to voice assistants and exposing that to Amazon Alexa I should now be able to say Alexa Turn on Shared Cam <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other blueprint that we have set out for you here is one that will automatically refresh your video feed in the background on your Fire TV stick every 10 minutes. Um, I'm going to click it and just show you, open link, preview it, and we just select the entities again. And then we can set a refresh interval. If you just leave it at 10 minutes, then every 10 minutes it will refresh the feed in the background, which means that it will always be instantly available, which means that it will load instantly every single time. <laughs> it's done, best tutorial ever. That's it, no faffing around with YAML. It's basically, it's basically IKEA flat pack automation minus the missing screws. How cool is that? <laughs> How cool is that? It is the coolest thing I've ever done. After marrying my wife and having a son, I think that's... This is the coolest thing I ever did. This. This, this script is the coolest thing I ever did. So I've got to get off to IFA, which I've been pronouncing IFA now for quite some time, so that's going to 
bite me in the ass. Um, so I don't have a lot of time, but I'm hoping to find the time to give you guys some written instructions on how I did this, filled with all the links and all the rest of it. But either way, if you look in the description, there are the links you need to the blueprints, and I shall answer as many comments as I can. Otherwise, uh, you, seriously, use ChatGPT. That's how I learned how to do almost all of this stuff. It took a long time, which is why I thought it would be better if somebody had a video to watch. But if you get stuck at any point, ChatGPT should be able to help you out. In the meantime, this video was brought to you by all of these incredible people. They're my patrons from Patreon, and without them, I, I wouldn't be doing this for a living. If you want to be like those guys, or like uh, my latest patron, Jan, Willem, Hudink, I hope I've said that right. Honestly, thank you so much. Without you, there would be no channel. Um, if you want to be like those guys, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Instagrams and my TikToks and my threads. Come and hang out there. I can be best friends. See you next time. And my Facebooks. Did I say that? Probably already said that. <laughs>